welcome back students today our topic of the class is class is about gravitation and we will study about gravitation its application and some of the laws which are used to explain the gravitation and now the gravitational force is calculated on the basis of gravitational force we calculate mass of earth and other interesting types of applications which are based on gravitation so here it is first of all during one of the our class we will go up to the detail the concept and theories of the gravitation and then after understanding the basic concept then we will start our new topic with the newton's law of gravitation so starting from gravitation it's our uh, class 1 on the lecture number 1 where earlier we have to see the main picture pin point of the picture uh, to understand the basic concept of gravitation early astronomy most human beings have always been interested in the motion of the object in the sky it started from the early stage and you have to keep in your mind that during this time you are living in another area and the people we are discussing for those who were not having such facilities such types of advanced technologies to understand the vastness of the universe so not only did early human early humans navigate by means of the sky but also the motions of the object in the sky predicted the changing of seasons etc these were different types of the theories that the people used to study to look at the sky and they used to understand the changing of the season and also uh, calculating the time duration and other types of the seasons they they were having a sound type of knowledge at that time for their life so this was early astronomy there were many early attempts both to describe and explain the motion of stars and planets in the sky many attempts we will see some of the attempts with which, which were made during the early stage to study about the astronomy all were unsatisfactory for one reason or the other they have not completely explained the whole process of the universe so here it is earth geocentric earth centered solar system is often credited to ptolemy and alexandrian greek thought the idea is very old this was the idea look at this was one of the model geocentric solar system the solar was the sun and then you see these are the different types of the one sun the other one is mercury then it is venus then it is earth and then it is moon and then it is mars if you look to the jupiter and then saturn these are the different types of uh, the early stage theory about the solar system model this was the early stage solar system model so this due uh, to this model this was the position of the earth so moving ahead tell me tell me solar system could be made to fit the observations data pretty well but only by becoming very complicated so this was another concept where earth and where is the epicycle planet center of epicycle these were the different theories at that time which which were used to calculate which were used to understand the sky galaxies and the universe so here it is copernicus solar system the polish cleric copernicus copernicus proposed a helic heliocentric sun center heliocentric mean 
sun centered solar system previous was earth centered so this are the solar system about 1500s so this is the center if you look at sun then mercury venus earth moon mars jupiter and saturn and the, in this theory the center of the solar system was the sun sun was considered as a center of solar system so here the solar system is sun mercury venus earth mars asteroid belt and then jupiter saturn and then comets and then uranus neptune and kepler's belt objects so this was one of the theory objections to copernicus how could earth be these were the objections made during that time how could earth be moving at enormous speed when we do not feel it so this was one of the objection number 2 we can't feel detect earth motion against the background star number 3 model did not fit the observations data observations data very well this was the reason why this did not fit now the galileo and copernicus galileo became convinced that copernicus was correct by observations of the sun venus and moon of the jupiter using newly invented telescope perhaps galileo was motivated to understand inertia by his desire and understood different idea so this is a tycho and kepler these were the most important scientists which have done in the field of planets planetary motion in the late 15th a danish nobleman named tycho brahe has set out to make the most accurate measurements of planetary motion to date in order to validate his own ideas of planetary motion so here the kepler name comes tycho's data was successfully interpreted by the german mathematician and scientist johannes kepler in early 1600 years so what was that this is the most important law which we study during the course of planetary motion of the sun and other kepler determined that the orbits of the planets were not perfectly circle but ellipses with the sun at its focus sun is at its focus planets are mo not moving in perfectly circular but they are having ellip ellipses type of the shape they are not perfectly circle the path through which the planets orbit now the second law is kepler determined that a planet moves faster when earth when near the sun and slows when far away the sun this is second law for this scientist which he has presented the first one predicted the shape of the orbits the second one where the planets are slower and where the planets are faster so the, again if you see the sun is the center and when it comes closer it becomes faster this planet when it moves away it becomes slower so this was the second law of kepler kepler laws provided a complete mathematical description of planetary motion including the motion of planetary satellite like the moon but why did the planets move like that what's the reason apple and the moon isaac newton realized that the motion of a falling apple and the motion of moon were both actually the same motion caused by the same force the gravitational force this one is the force which we will study in this chapter about the gravitational force during this class we are learning about the background ideas the initial ideas to understand to make the our concept more and more clear to understand so that you you must know what happened during the early stage how the researches were made to understand the motions of these planets so uh, the most remarkable work was done by the kepler to find two laws of the kepler's are very much important in case of planetary motion 
Sparco and the people who were linked with the space study and the other types of the motions in the space. So uh, Isaac Newton gave another type of uh, important theory that the, what causes the object to fall down, gravitational force. So universal gravitational, Newton's idea was that gravity, gravity was a universal force acting between any two objects. It may be acting between moon, earth and a person, apple and a person or anywhere, moon and earth and uh, objects. So this is the concept of uh, gravitational force acting on the object. If you look at, this is the relation between the two objects. And if there is a force exact acting between the two objects, that force was called universal gravitational force. So at the earth surface, this one is earth surface. If you allow a apple to fall, it falls down and this falls down due to its weight mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity and you will be able to get the value of the weight. Newton knew that the gravitational force on the apple equals the apple's weight mg where g is value is 9.8 or it's 10 at the rounded of meter per second scale. So by using this value and uh, by putting the value of the mass you can calculate the weight of any object which is falling under the influence of the earth. So weight of the uh, moon, how it is calculated as c is equal to mg means Newton's uh, uh, reason that the centripetal force on the moon was also applied by the earth gravitational force. So this is the concept of earth gravitational force on the moon. So weight of the moon, Newton calculated, showed that the centripetal force needed for the moon, moon's motion was about one over three, six, zero, zero of the mg the mass wherever where m is the mass of the object this is the concept of weight of the moon now what about the weight of the moon newton knew though the moon was about 60 times faster farther than the center of the earth than the apple so if you take the scale of the 60 that is 3600 so here are the values of gravity values can be calculated with the help of Planets. This one is Mercury, Venus, Mercury, Venus. This one is Mercury. This one is Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. These are the different types of the planets and values of the given for each planet is given. Questions at the end of the topic are what is heliocentric theory. But it's, if you are able to find out the answer for this question, it means you have understood the basic idea of the concept to understand gravitational force. What is geocentric theory? And other question is, what is the Kepler laws? You have to understand two laws of the Kepler. These are three questions just to refresh your mind or understand what are the applications, how will you explain? Number one, heliocentric means you have to write on the answer first. And then geocentric mean where first one is, let's clear it. Sun is at the center of the earth. Geocentric mean earth is at the center of the earth. And what about the Kepler's law, shape of the orbit. And then the other one was about the Kepler's law. Yes, you have understood it. Write it down, please. So, Thank you very much, dear students. Hope you people have understood this topic. And in the next class, we will start the exact topics of your flavor, of your level, that is gravitation, or the Newton's law of gravitation.